This is a presentation about anatomy of the heart. These are our objectives of this PowerPoint. First of all, we will be having an overview about the heart. Then we will address the location of the heart, the shape of the heart, then the surface markings on the chest wall, like uh, identifying the position of the heart from the surface anatomy of the chest wall. We will talk about the structure of the pericardium covering the heart and uh, the muscular wall that makes the uh, real muscular wall of the heart. Then uh, we will know that the heart is a hollow muscular organ and it has different rooms which are called chambers and uh, because the heart contracts automatically it needs a pacemaker and a system that transmits this electric activity all over the heart in a very coordinated way we will talk about what are the surfaces of the heart the borders what makes the superior the inferior the lateral uh, borders we will talk about the skeleton of the heart you know the heart has a skeleton because it is a moving muscle and it needs a point of uh, references and uh, the heart also has valves because blood flows into the heart and it needs to flow in one physiological direction and then uh, later on in another presentation we will talk about the blood supply of the heart in this presentation we will go back to basics there is nothing better than basics in addressing anything and uh, our basics uh, in understanding anything is the rule of questions and answers ask a question and there will be most likely an answer for that question let's have an overview of what is the heart this line is going to lead us to the idea that the heart is a hollow muscular organ what does that mean? That means it is made of muscles, the cardiac muscles, and we know lots of things about cardiac muscle. And uh, a hollow means there is a, a space inside this mass of muscle. Then this hollow muscular mass of muscles, uh, it is going to have uh, two separate pumps there is a left pump which starts at the left atrium the left room on the left side of the heart receiving blood from the lungs and then passing it to the next chamber or room through a valve and we will be discussing this valve later on and then the blood is allowed only in one direction and the blood gets into the next uh, uh, room or chamber and this is it's going to be the left ventricle the real pumping part of the left pump which is going to send blood to all parts of the body that is the left pump then we will go to the right pump and the right pump is uh, on the right side of the heart and it's made of right atrium and receives blood not from the lungs it receives blood from all parts of the body passes 
the blood from this right atrium to the pumping part which is the right ventricle and it allows blood to flow in one direction only and the right ventricle is going to pump blood to the lungs to be oxygenated the first question we are going to ask is uh, where is the heart located let us see if this image is going to answer our question where is the heart now where is the heart this is the heart and it is lying between the two lungs the right and left and it's in the middle what is the structure that's in the middle of the thoracic cavity that divides it into two halves the answer is a septum what is this septum called it is called the media steinum and we can see that the heart is between the two lungs therefore what do we conclude we conclude that the heart is in the media steinum which part of the mediastinum is the inferior part of the mediastinum what about the superior one the superior part of the mediastinum contains many structures now what is the inferior part of the heart related to it is related to the diaphragm which part of the diaphragm the central tendon of the diaphragm not the right one and not the left one We still need to ask ourselves where is the heart now this image is showing us the sternum the anterior breastbone and if we divide the sternum into two halves that is uh, the very axis of the body we can see that the heart has one third on the right and two-thirds on the left the great vessels coming out of the heart what is this image this is a cross-section of the chest showing the two lungs showing the anterior chest wall and the posterior chest wall and in the center we can see the heart the heart is posterior to the sternum and it makes an impression on uh, the lung this is the left lung and this is the right lung and the heart is anterior to the vertebral column This is a view to show the surface markings on the chest wall and uh, we start counting ribs this is the rib number one this is rib number two and we always go to rib number two why is that because it is attached to the sternum at the sternal angle and the sternal angle is uh, subcutaneous under the skin and we can feel it and when we go lateral uh, we are going to feel rib number two 
Rib number one is very difficult to feel because it is under the clavicle. Now, this is number three. This is rib number four. This is rib number five. And this is rib number six. Now, the first point to the left, as you can see, it is three centimeters from the edge of the sternum at the lower border of rib number two. That's point number one. Then we go to point number two. If you look at its location, it is the upper border of the third rib. Three centimeters from the edge of the sternum. Now, point number three, go to rib number six, and it is three centimeters from the edge of the sternum. Then, the fourth point, go to rib number five, and then go below it. That is in the intercostal space number five, and it is nine centimeters from the sternum. These are the four superficial surface anatomy of where the heart is. This is an anterior view of contents of the chest where the ribs are uh, removed and the sternum is also uh, removed. And what do we see? We see the heart in the middle of the lower part of the mediastinum. And we can see that there is a white cover which is opened to show underneath it the uh, heart. This is a fibrous tissue covering the heart and this is called the fibrous pericardium. What is this image going to benefit me? It is telling me that the heart is cone-shaped and this is the base of the heart because a cone has a base and an apex and sides. This is the base of the heart and then if you follow the outline you will come to the apex of the heart. So the heart is cone-shaped. What is this image showing? It is a sagittal view of the thoracic cavity where I can see anteriorly that this is the sternum, body of the sternum, and the structure immediately posterior to the heart is the esophagus, uh, the tube that connects the pharynx down to the stomach and the inferior relation to the heart is the diaphragm. the next slide uh, check your knowledge about the position of the heart when you check your knowledge on this image you can conclude lots of things what is the mediastinum 
The mediastinum is a septum that divides the thoracic cavity into two parts, right and left. Where is it? It's in the middle part of the thoracic cavity, connecting the sternum to the vertebral column. Now, does it have many structures or few structures? The answer is many structures. Now, we are going to divide it into two parts. The, the, the line connecting the two parts is uh, from the sternal angle to the thoracic vertebra for disc and five. It is at the level of the disc between four and five. Anything superior to this line is called superior mediastinum. Anything inferior to this line is called inferior mediastinum. And it is extending from the, st the sternum and the inferior mediastinum is divided into three regions. The green one is the anterior mediastinum and it is a narrow space between the sternum and the heart. Then the middle mediastinum, which is the red one, is the place where the heart is. So where is the heart? It is in the middle part of the inferior mediastinum. And what do we find in this blue area? It is the posterior mediastinum and we found the esophagus. It's time to write our notes about the mediastinum before we lose track of it. And what are the regions of the mediastinum? The mediastinum is divided into a superior part and an inferior part. Now, in the superior part, we are going to see that it is uh, connected to the neck through what is called superior uh, thoracic uh, opening or aperture and it is at the level of the disc between T4 and T5. Now we come to the inferior mediastinum. The story is that it is inferior and it is divided into anterior mediastinum and it has these relations and the middle mediastinum is what we should take note of because it is the largest section and it contains the pericardium, the heart and the major vessels. The posterior mediastinum is small, long, it is posterior to the heart and it extends from T5 to T12. This is something probably new to you. This is a chest x-ray where it shows the shadow of the heart. The shadow of the heart, you can extract lots of information from this. Like what? Like it's one third of the midline to the right, two thirds to the left, and this diameter should be at least less than half of the diameter of uh, the chest wall. We already had uh, enough questions and answers about the location of the heart. Now we will address coverings of the heart. 
why is the heart covered with different structures? The answer is for protection plus for providing smooth surfaces because the heart contracts and it needs smooth surfaces of its own and a smooth surface to uh, contract without feeling any friction. Now, inside this circle, you can see that there is a structure which is opened. It's a white structure, and this is one of the covering of uh, the heart. It is the uh, fibrous pericardium, and it is made of one layer. It is just like a sac when you put the heart in, in that uh, sac and the smooth surface is uh, provided by what is called serous pericardium and we will see the arrangement of the serous pericardium in next few slides this is an image just to confirm that the heart has uh, a fibrous pericardium if you look at the inferior side it is continuous with the diaphragm and if you look up you can see that this white cover of the heart is also attached to the great vessels this is the story of the serous pericardium now we have finished the story of fibrous pericardium by saying what by saying that it is a single layer, it is made of fibrous tissue, and it is attached to the diaphragm, covers the heart, and it is attached to the great vessels. What is the story now of the serous pericardium? The word serous means that uh, this membrane or this cavity is not connected to the outside, and it has thin layer of fluid. So, to start with, uh, this, the pericardial cavity is an empty uh, balloon. What is going to happen next is that the heart, when it develops, it comes and pushes itself on the surface of this balloon. It is not going to open the pericardial cavity and gets in. No, it pushes itself on the balloon of the pericardial cavity and when it does, it sits there. So there is part of the serous pericardium touching the heart. This is called the visceral uh, pericardium and it has another name also called epicardium and then uh, we have a parietal at the periphery part of the serous pericardium the parietal one is going to touch the fibrous pericardium and the end result is that there is small cavity surrounding the heart which has what has very smooth surface because it is a serous membrane is there any fluid inside this pericardial cavity the answer is yes how much of fluid it is a thin film of fluid so that is the parietal part of the serous pericardium touching the fibrous pericardium. In this uh, image, especially the part on your right, it is a hand pushing into the balloon or the pericardial cavity and it is not opening the pericardial cavity or the balloon to be inside it. No, it is pushing it 
and getting into the depression in the pericardial cavity and there we have the balloon touching the hand is the visceral pericardium and the wall of the balloon on the outside is the parietal serous pericardium probably we had enough questions about the pericardium its two types and the story how we have visceral and parietal uh, pericardium now we want to see the layers of the heart wall what are the layers of the heart from inside to the outside the heart chambers are lined with simple squamous epithelium called endothelium why is that because this type of epithelium provides smooth surface for the blood to flow on and uh, the blood will not clot the blood needs very smooth surface deep to the endocardium is the myocardium how much do I know about the myocardium uh, we had learned that the myocardium is, is uh, one type of three uh, basic muscles it is having striations it is short cells it has central nucleus it is branching and it has intercalated discs connecting cells together then next is the visceral pericardium this is also a simple squamous epithelium it is part of the pericardial sac then we have a cavity this cavity is is a potential cavity and there is a thin film of fluid to allow the heart to contract on smooth surface next is the parietal pericardium that is lining the outer fibrous uh, layer of protective structures of the heart which is the fibrous pericardium it is a slide where you can test yourself and uh, practice identifying the different layers of the wall of the heart the story of the wall of the heart started with the layers uh, making the wall of the heart starting from inside as endocardium and on the outside as uh, the fibrous pericardium the outermost there is a question uh, that we have to ask ourselves and that is uh, is the thickness of the heart wall the same all over the four chambers the answer is no it is not it is thickest in the left ventricle why is that because the left ventricle is pumping the blood to all parts of the body now is the right ventricle having a thick wall as well the answer is yes it has but not as thick as the left ventricle what about the atrium the right and left atrium they are having thin wall because they don't contract forcefully now since the heart has four chambers there is a groove called coronary sulcus between the different chambers especially evident between the right and left ventricles 
this image answers the question whether the two ventricles have the same thickness of the wall the answer in this image is no it's not the same it is the left ventricle that has the thicker than the right and the left ventricle has the thickest wall of all the four chambers now what are the four chambers of the heart here is a sagittal section of the heart it is a figure it is not a real heart and it shows the four chambers of uh, this pump the first receiving chamber of the heart is the right atrium it is receiving the blood from the upper parts of the body through superior vena cava and from the lower part of the body uh, through the inferior vena cava and it has thin wall then it empties blood into the right ventricle which is thicker wall and there's a valve between right atrium and right ventricle it is important uh, that the blood flows in one physiological direction and that is the right ventricle then we have the left atrium the left atrium is a receiving chamber but it receives blood the oxygenated blood from where from the lungs and it has four uh, vessels emptying into this uh, chamber and it collects oxygenated blood then through a valve it sends it to the left ventricle this is the fourth chamber the left ventricle is, has the thickest wall and it is going to pump blood to all parts of the body The right pump of the heart, which is receiving the deoxygenated blood, sending uh, the blood to the right ventricle, and the right ventricle will push blood to the lungs to be oxygenated. Can I see the right pump uh, more explained? The answer is yes. We draw this line to separate the right pump from the left pump. Now, this is the right atrium receiving blood from all parts of the body and then it passes uh, blood to the right ventricle through a valve, one-way valve that will prevent backflow blood must flow in a normal physiological direction and after blood is pumped into the right ventricle the right ventricle is going to send blood to the lungs through a large vessel called the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary trunk if you ask why this vessel is called an artery while it contains deoxygenated blood the answer is the basic rule that any vessel comes out of the heart is an artery any vessel coming into the heart is a vein so this is an artery because it is coming out of the heart to the lungs although it contains deoxygenated uh, blood now this flow of deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle 
is going through the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary trunk and it is then dividing to two branches, one going to the left and one going to the right the lungs. Can I see the left pump of the heart? The left pump pumps oxygen carried through the blood to the all parts of the body and it is also made of an atrium and a ventricle and they are connected by special one-way valve. Here is a drawing of the heart showing all four chambers and uh, going to your right you can see that this is the left atrium receiving four pulmonary veins these veins are marked red because they come from the lungs to the heart getting into the heart although they contain oxygenated blood but they are veins and then a bicuspid valve connecting the right left atrium to the left ventricle and the left ventricle now uh, we know some information the basic information about it and this left ventricle is going to pump blood through the aorta the largest artery in the body and this aorta is going to branch and distribute oxygenated blood to all parts of the body and the beginning of the aorta is also guarded by a valve preventing blood from coming back to the heart. What are the surfaces of the heart? This is an anterior view of the heart where we can see on our right it is the right atrium with a little appendage, little extension called the right auricle. Then the center of the anterior surface is the right ventricle and then when we go to the right we can see that there is a groove and this groove is called interventricular groove where arteries and veins run through this groove and then we go to the right and we see part of the left ventricle which has the apex of the cone-shaped heart uh, included in the left ventricle and when we go up it is the right auricle part of uh, the left auricle part of the left atrium so these are the structures that make the surface of the anterior part of the heart question what is the largest structure of the heart that makes the anterior surface the answer is the right ventricle what structure makes the lateral part or the left part of the anterior surface of the heart the answer is part of the left ventricle This is the anterior surface of the heart and it is time to test your knowledge. You know what is this structure. We have just asked ourselves a question about this in the previous slide. And you know what is this structure. So carry on and test your knowledge. This is a posterior view of the heart and the chamber that makes the posterior view of the heart is the left atrium. This is the base of the cone. It is not the inferior surface that sits on the diaphragm. So 
to make it very clear which structure makes the base of the cone shaped heart the answer is the left atrium posterior continuing uh, the discussion of surfaces of the heart we have looked at the anterior surface and posterior surface now we are looking at the inferior surface that sits on the diaphragm and this is the inferior surface and it is made of uh, the sulcus that separates the right ventricle from the left ventricle and it is evident here that the left ventricle makes the majority of the inferior surface while the right ventricle makes part of the inferior surface of the heart now test your knowledge and decide which surface of the heart is this and which surface of the heart is represented by this structure borders of the heart uh, this is an important issue because we can read uh, the borders of the heart in x-rays and if there is any enlargement of any of the chambers uh, this enlargement is evident on the borders of the heart this is an anterior view of the heart and this is the superior border of the heart made by the great vessels that come in and out of the heart then we have this uh, right border of the heart made mainly by the right atrium then we come to the inferior surface inferior border of the heart which is mainly by the right ventricle and at the end to the left a small part of the left ventricle then it is the left border of the heart which is made basically of the left ventricle and in the upper part a small part of the left oracle next we will look into the different chambers of the heart let us check our information about the different chambers of the heart we start on the right side the receiving chamber is the right atrium then the valve connecting the right atrium to the right ventricle is uh, a valve called tricuspid valve a valve that has three parts and then the pulmonary trunk will go to the lungs and it is at its base is guarded by the pulmonary valves on the left side of the heart it is the left atrium the receiving uh, of blood from the lungs and you can see it has four openings and there are four arrows inside the yellow circle then blood will go through a valve called mitral valve that has two parts and the blood will enter the left ventricle which is going to be contracting to push blood the heart's valves the heart has two types of valves the valves inside the black rectangle are called semilunar valves they guard 
the beginning of the pulmonary trunk and the beginning of the aorta while the type of valves in the yellow triangle is called is called cuspid valve because it has a different structure so we have two systems of valves the semilunar system and the cuspid system this is a superior view of the heart where uh, the upper part has been removed and you can see that the, the valves inside the black circles have the same structure while lower down the valves inside the yellow circles are quite different from the ones in the black circles and even the left valve inside the yellow circle has two parts it is A and B while the one on your right has three parts the A, the B and the E let us first address the semilunar system this is an example of the semilunar system the semilunar leaflets of the the valve are three they form a pocket when the blood goes out of a ventricle these leaflets are stuck to the wall and the blood will go out of the ventricle easily now when the blood tries to come into the heart back again the blood will fill these pockets and the valve closes so this is the direction of the blood that pushes the, the semilunar leaflets to the wall of the artery and when blood tries to come in they are filled with the blood and the valve is closed this is the semilunar system what makes the semilunar uh, system of valves it is three semilunar leaflets that have uh, a nodule at its margin and there is a fibrous ring around this valve let's have a basic idea about the cuspid system the cuspid system is made of three parts First of all, there is a leaflet or a cusp that is going to move up and down according to whether the valve is opened or not. Then, the margins of the leaflets or the cusps are attached by thin strands of connective tissue. These are called cordy tendini and these cordy tendini are attached to a muscle called papillary muscle now when blood comes in the cusps or the leaflets come down and the blood will flow from atria to ventricles now when the ventricles contract now the ventricles will push blood to aorta or pulmonary trunk and we need to close the valves between the ventricles and the atria so the blood will push these leaflets up and preventing this up movement to go extra distance these 
papillary muscles and cordy tendon you will put tension on the leaflets so the leaflets will not allow blood to go back in unphysiological direction Here is another image of the cuspid system where the opening and the closing part is called the cusp or the leaflet and here is the papillary muscle which sends strands or threads of connective tissue connecting the margins of the leaflets and when there is pressure under the leaflet, it will close the valve, but it will not go up and the papillary muscle and the cordy tendon will prevent this back movement. Now, this is the left ventricle, and you can see that this is a, a valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle, and it has two leaflets. Uh, therefore, it is called mitral valve. And this is the leaflet, and these are the cordy tendini attached to the margins of the leaflets. And this is the papillary muscle that contracts and prevents upward movement of the leaflets what is a cuspid system made of first of all it is made of a fibrous ring a ring of collagen fibers that has a very constant shape if this shape is distorted then blood will leak in an physiological upward direction so number one is a fibrous ring number two is the cordy tendon the threads of tendons coming from the papillary muscle and number three is the papillary muscle so these are two images where on your left when the valve is open and on the right when the valve is closed now practice your knowledge and see what are these two valves in which system do they belong to and Posteriorly, what are these valves and to which type they belong to? Now, the heart is a hollow muscular organ and it contracts, therefore, it needs a, a point of insertion, and this is what is called the fibrous skeleton of the heart. The starting point of the story of the fibrous skeleton of the heart is as this image is showing us it is the valves each valve whether it is a semilunar or whether it is a cuspid system has a fibrous ring a ring of dense connective tissue now if we have four valves we are going to have four rings these are the basic unit of the fibrous skeleton of the heart now if we look at areas between the rings of the valves we can see white tissue this is connective tissue in the forms of triangles and we will see these triangles in a moment 
a similar image to the one before and this is the left atrioventricular valve and this is the right one how do I know this is the left and this is the right if you look at to your left you can see that this valve is opened and it has two leaflets while on the right it has three so the one on the left is called mitral valve the one on the right is called tricuspid valve and this is the aortic valve which is a semilunar system and this is the pulmonary valve which is also of the semilunar system now each valve has a fibrous ring these are the basic the majority of the components of the skeleton of the heart then we have two triangular fibrous tissue structures between the circles this is the minor component of the skeleton of the heart. This is a diagram showing that the fibrous skeleton of the heart is made of basically the four valvular rings plus connective tissue between these rings. Now the chambers will be opened and we try to see what are the structures inside these chambers starting with the right atrium this is the right atrium uh, anterior wall is opened now you will see that there is an opening of the superior vena cava emptying blood into the right atrium as well as the inferior vena cava opening into it and here is a small opening bringing blood from the veins of the heart itself in this area pointed uh, by this arrow you can see that the surface is smooth and this is the septum between the right and left atrium and then next is this oval shaped structure this oval shaped structure is made of two parts a depression in the middle and this is called fossa ovalis this is one day was opened so that blood will shift from the right atrium to the right uh, to the left atrium because the lungs are collapsed as what happens in the fetus inside his mother's womb now the margins of this fossa ovaris are raised they are not flat and what is this structure called it is called the limbus of fossa ovaris so where is fossa ovalis it is in the interatrial septum now when we look to the right we see a reflected part of the wall of the right atrium and the surface of this part is not smooth it has elevations and the myocardium in this area is having elevations and depressions and in this situation we can see that these elevations are coming from a structure called Crista terminalis that runs straight and these elevations are coming from the Crista terminalis and this is like the comb of the hair so these structures meaning the crista terminalis and this 
muscle, the rough one, is called the pectinate muscle. Means that it is like a comb. Then the cavity of the right atrium has a little extension called the auricle. This is a space, a spare space. When the right atrium receives more blood than it can hold, then this space is opened and this is called the auricle. What is the auricle? The auricle is an extension of the atrial cavity. What is the inside of the auricle? Uh, is it smooth or rough? The answer is it is rough. What does the story of the right ventricle is going to tell us? This is the right ventricle opened and the major structure we see is these are the, this is one of the cusps of the tricuspid valve connecting the right atrium to the right ventricle and I can see these strands they are the cordy tendon of the system and this is a papillary muscle completing the three components of the cuspid system of valves and this arrow raises the question which is is the inside of the right ventricle smooth or rough the answer it is rough what is this roughness due to it is due to the myocardium is not smooth and these elevations and depressions are called trabeculi carni and then I have this special structure it is a trabeculi carni that is coming from the wall of the right ventricle and then separating from it and connecting back to the wall of the right ventricle <clears throat> and this is called a modulator band <clears throat> next is the right ventricle is connected to the pulmonary trunk sending deoxygenated blood to the lungs through the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary artery and this root of this pulmonary trunk is guarded by a valve which type of valve it is the semi lunar valve you need to go through this animated image of the right ventricle and try to test your knowledge what is the structure what is this one what is this one and then uh, this is the inside wall of the right ventricle and what is this structure and what type of valves are these it's time to look into the left atrium the receiving uh, left part of the left pump receiving blood from the lungs this is the left atrium making the base of the heart facing the vertebral column and we can see that it receives four uh, pulmonary arteries from the lungs and 
to its right is the right atrium and inferiorly there is a large vein called the coronary sulcus this is a vein that collects blood from the heart itself as a pump and it is going in the groove between the atrium and the ventricle and it empties into the right atrium We always need to practice our knowledge. Now we know what chamber is this and what is this vein and this is going to be the inferior surface made majorly by the something ventricle and then this is a groove between two ventricles on the inferior surface and this is going to be the right ventricle. We will have a peak into the uh, left ventricle. If you can't find your way into the details of the left ventricle, uh, I will give you a hand. What is this? This is a leaflet of the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle and this is a cuspid system and then the cordy tendon of the margins of the cusps and of course this is a papillary muscle it is part of the wall of the ventricle and it is a myocardial tissue then this is the other leaflet of the mitral valve and then look at the arrow of uh, pointing at this area the question is is this area rough or smooth the answer it is rough why because of the arrangement of the myocardium The heart is automatically programmed to contract rhythmically. It is not uh, that we order it to contract and we order it to stop. It has uh, its own system and this is called the conductive system of the heart. What is the story of the conductive system of the heart? First of all, we need a pacemaker. That means a starting point where the electric impulse is generated. And this is the sinoatrial node. It is where? It is in the wall of the right atrium. Which part of the right atrium? It is very near the opening of the superior vena cava then this is the place where electricity is generated the impulse is generated where is this impulse going you may remember that when we studied the basic tissues we said that muscles are excitable tissue so is the nervous tissue so when a muscle receives a excitable impulse it will take it and it will spread it so the electricity of the heart from the sinoatrial node is spreading throughout the two atria and the response of the two atria is going to be their contraction pushing blood to the ventricle then this electric activity must be transferred to the ventricles so that the ventricles contract after the atria now 
this electricity is prevented from going to the ventricles why because of the skeleton of the heart the skeleton of the heart makes the two atria electrically separated or insulated from the ventricles so we are going to have a node present in the interatrial septum and this node is called atrioventricular node it is going to pick up the electricity and it is going to go through the skeleton of the heart and then it is going to enter the interventricular septum this extension from the atrioventricular node to the interventricular septum is called the bundle of Hess and then this bundle of Hess is going to do what? it is going to divide into what? into two branches one going to the left ventricle and the other is going to the right uh, ventricle and they are called left bundle branch going to the left ventricle and right ventricle or right bundle branch going to the right ventricle where do I find these branches of the bundle of his the answer is in the interventricular septum where do I find the atrioventricular node it is in the interatrial septum where is the sinoatrial node the pacemaker is situated it is in the wall of the right atrium near the opening of the superior vena cap don't forget to check your knowledge before you are checked at the exam now do, you, do I suggest something for checking your knowledge if you are interested simply copy the mind map on a piece of paper and see if you learn something or not checking your knowledge is always important when you check your knowledge and the result of the check is what is discovering what you know at what and what you don't know and how much of what you know is correct and how much is not correct this is in fact called reality check it tells reality to yourself if you want me to suggest anything uh, doing the reality check I would say copy the mind map that I have uh, delivered to you and when you copy it and finish uh, you will feel something different